today's live show. We are already live now, and my guest is a wonderful guest. I've already posted in all my places that you know it's going to be a wonderful show today. Uh, so before I go into the show and actually talk to Doctor, first of all, let me wish him. Hi, Doctor. How are you? Hi, hi, guys. Yeah. Um, I'm so, good. I'm good. Good. So we are going to talk. It's nice to hear the word "good." From long time, I've not heard the people saying the word "good," doctor. So it's nice to hear the word "good." Oh no! Actually, to be honest, the last two weeks have been really, really good. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I, I feel a sense of normalcy actually coming back because normalcy okay. came back too fast. <laughs> okay? okay. Suddenly everything stopped, but now after two weeks, I'm able to smile. I think. I think it is coming to a gradual end, so it's good. Of course, things are much better at least. That too from a doctor. So let me introduce to Doctor Santosh Jakab. He is an orthopedic surgeon and a COVID-19 physician. We are going to talk to him on many, many more things. But before that, first, Doctor, what was that one change you saw in yourself uh, uh, from the time the pandemic started till date? What was that change? Oh, for the first question itself is an extremely uh, very pertinent question. See, the one thing, uh, the one change I have is I've become so, so humble now, you know, humility just slapped itself mm -hmm. on my face, you know, because as an orthopedic surgeon, mm -hmm. we, we don't see deaths, basically, you know, there are fractures, we fix them. We succeed most of the time. Very rarely we, we fail. But with COVID-19, oh my mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. there is absolutely, I realized that we have no control. You know, okay. we have to follow a set pattern or mm -hmm. habits and wait and watch. That is it. So okay. humility and also empathy, you know, to be able to understand what patients mm -hmm are going through because I mm -hmm. personally know families mm -hmm. who have lost father, son, mother in the second wave. Oh, I know families who have lost father in the first wave, mother got the COVID-19 in, in the first wave, but survived, got it again in the second wave, did not survive. Oh, so God. I have put myself in their shoes and I have tried to understand what they are going through, you know, and that has just taught me to be really, really humble, if not anything else. More than anything, I think I'm really happy that I was I was able to see this, even though through something really, really hard. I think it will change my life as a doctor. Absolutely. So when you're saying the life of a doctor, you really know, even before taking the course of being in, in the medical field, of course, author is a different thing, as you said. But what drives you to take medicine? Is it because of your parents? And how did this take, happen? That Or you generally wrote an exam and you passed out, you got a seat, what to do? How was it? Uh, no, I actually fought with my dad and I said, I, I will do medicine, otherwise I won't do anything else. Okay. <clears throat> and um, like... I had scored very good marks, but as mm -hmm. we were, um, our cutoff was really, really high okay, because mm -hmm. then there was no need. So my cutoff was 292 out mm -hmm. of 300. I had to get, but I got only 289. Okay. And so uh, my dad said, okay, if you're not getting it, then why don't you do another alternative course? Mm -hmm. No, I, I literally brought the roof down and said, no, I will will do medicine only. And my okay. mom really supported that. So that's why I'm here now. <laughs> if, not, if not, I wouldn't have been here. Yeah. Now, uh, OK, that part is nice. Now, when when why did you take ortho? Is that, you know, what what in uh, drive you? Oh, why did I take orthopedics? Like after MBBS, I went and worked in uh, a mission hospital in Ambur, mm -hmm. where my dad is from, our native mm -hmm. town. And mm -hmm. there I was really attracted to orthopedics and how orthopedics could really help people mm -hmm. move. You know, I've always been fascinated by 
what is the real difference between life and death okay because as a doctor we want to keep people closer to life no so i i figured out that it was movement you know because when we see somebody who is not moving what do we do immediately we shake them and we say oh okay you're moving you're all right so i realized that movement is everything so if you're able to assist people to move you know see basically orthopedic surgeons yeah fix bones ligaments replace joints and everything but if you think about it we are movement surgeons you know if you are unable to move you come to us we fix you you are able to move better and without any pain absolutely so, as so being an orthopedic surgeon and a movement surgeon you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh so i i figured that out quite early and mm -hmm. that's where my my journey with orthopedics began that's wonderful now during the pandemic you have become a covid physician this uh, this happened to you how did it happen was it you selfly volunteered and what was it yeah so there were two reasons i will explain mm -hmm. it very clearly because i think mm -hmm. a lot of you would like to know why a surgeon is treating covid 19 mm -hmm. so see Correct. the first thing is i mm -hmm. knew that the virus is completely new so in the timelines march 2020 i saw my mm -hmm. first covid 19 mm -hmm. patient and after i saw the patient when mm -hmm. i was researching i realized that nobody knew anything even online okay. but i knew one thing anybody who had comorbidities mm -hmm. be at high risk and my parents have all the comorbidities in the world and i started to read about it research mm -hmm. about it only to make sure that if my parents got it i needed to be there to treat okay so okay. and as i was reading about it and as i started to treat it i told mm -hmm. you guys i'm a mm -hmm. movement surgeon mm -hmm. i saw that this covid 19 without even causing mm -hmm. a fracture or any bone problem or anything like that you know mm -hmm. what it does it stops people from moving correct Absolutely. so i realize that it is an antithesis to mm -hmm. what i believe in you know i believe in helping people move mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. virus is just shutting that down you know in icu nobody can move they can't even breathe and the reason is in order for us to move in order mm -hmm. for us to convert what we eat into energy which mm -hmm. helps us move we need oxygen absolutely without oxygen you cannot use any energy all your mm -hmm. systems might be absolutely perfect but you cannot mm -hmm. move and that's mm -hmm. where my fight with covid-19 started <laughs> you know because i realized that this is a hidden enemy it's not letting anybody move and so i have to help as many as i can to get out of it and to move that's why i am here Wonderful, wonderful. So, in the process, you must have gone through a lot of. Uh, I want to know what goes in the mind of a doctor because psychologically, also you like how we are affected, sitting at home and getting panic. You must also be going through a lot by seeing people, you know, coming and joining, suddenly leaving. Some are getting well, some are dying. So, you must have gone. You must have gone through a lot of trauma. How was it for you psychologically this entire year? Oh yeah, it's it's like it's etched in my head, so I can I can tell you with with the timeline. You know, when mm -hmm. COVID started in two thousand nineteen December, mm -hmm. I was a bit excited. I was a bit scared, as in something new. You know, I I knew that okay, it could be something, could not be something. And then in March, when it came to India, first of all, we were really really scared because there's absolutely no knowledge about it. Mm -hmm. And after that. misinformation 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 and in july the wave mm -hmm. actually hit that's oh. when i i realized that oh this was quite a crazy virus because for the first mm -hmm. time i'm seeing people who i admitted okay mm -hmm. dying in four or five days you know it was new for us mm -hmm. and uh, like i was able to uh, start treating covid in the icu because uh when we started the the convalescent plasma program in april mm -hmm. i was in charge of it at mm -hmm. 
Chetty mm-hmm. Nath Super Speciality Hospitals. So mm-hmm. it gave me an opportunity to go and mm-hmm. see patients who mm-hmm. needed this, you know. So I had the opportunity to assess ICU patients. There mm-hmm. I learned a lot about this. And I, I saw that it was affecting the elderly. Primarily, oh. the first wave was mm-hmm. scary, but also there was relief. The relief was that the youngsters are not getting affected. You know, most of them who were getting sick were above 60. We even saved a 29-year-old who was on ventilator in the first wave. You know, it was quite manageable. And then the first wave ended with relief, to be very honest with you, because it had a slow, meandering end. It ended like, okay, the war is done. Then when, and uh, November last year, my son was born. So I was really happy also for some time. And after that, there was a lull. And I was quite nervous during the lull because we were acting as if the second wave is not going to come and COVID is done. And there was so much fear and misinformation about vaccinations. I was absolutely sure that we really missed the four months to vaccinate you know and then when the wave started the second wave was not like the first wave i was seeing young people have 70 percent lung involvement see and also the different issue was in the first wave oxygen saturation used to all first you know we used to tell check your oxygen saturation this mm-hmm. way, I saw people with 60% involvement have mm-hmm. normal oxygen saturation. Oh. So this way, oxygen saturation fell last. That is why many people suddenly, all of them were only checking saturation. Suddenly, when the saturation falls, it fell really, really fast. Very bad, and yeah. They were unable to find ICUs. Oh, so... And again, even now, I am quite happy and I am relieved. But the second wave didn't end right. You know, I used to get 150 calls during the day for admissions and 15 in the night. So one day I got 150, 15 in the night. The next day I got 25 calls in the day, 5 calls in the night. And the day after that, I got like five calls in the day, no calls in the night. That's how the second wave ended. It ended abruptly like that. I'm very happy that it really did because all of us were, I think, this close to breaking. Absolutely. Close to breaking. So I am super thrilled that it ended like that. I just hope that it stays that way. Yeah. Because everywhere there is a lot of, lot of rumors or we don't know whether the third wave is going to come. ICMR is clearly saying that, you know, third wave is not going to happen. So don't go by it. But some again, we hear somewhere, we read somewhere that, you know, there is a chance of third wave. Some say we are already in the third wave, you know. So there's a lot of misconception on mis- uh, what, a, what is this present situation? What do you think, uh, Dr. Yeah. Sandhush? So, like, uh, let's think differently, okay? Mm-hmm. See, we are thinking like this virus is mm-hmm. very similar to all, all the viruses in the past, okay? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. the Spanish flu. Yes, I agree. It mm-hmm. could be. But mm-hmm. you have to understand that human beings have completely changed. The environment mm-hmm. has completely changed. So okay. I don't really see a timeline like the mm-hmm. first wave or the second wave or the third wave. What okay. I saw clinically was mm-hmm. during the first mm-hmm. wave, the elderly... Mm-hmm were getting mm-hmm. affected the virus mm-hmm. could not affect the youngsters i am mm-hmm. i was absolutely sure okay the youngsters were actually having mm-hmm. covid parties in the uk you know because they were getting the covid and they didn't get infected i have spoken to certain mm-hmm. adolescents like 20 year olds mm-hmm. in the first wave and mm-hmm. they didn't have any symptoms and their ct chest was also clean in the second wave though mm-hmm. you know forget the timing when the mm-hmm. virus came back again, it mm-hmm. came back faster and it had also learned to affect 
the lungs of the youngsters yes. without showing a fall of saturation. The reason why there were so many deaths is that the virus had tweaked itself very slightly. So in the last wave, we all said, check your saturation. It will slowly fall. This wave, we didn't know. We realized only at the end that saturation is falling last. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. Okay. See, we have to learn history. You know why? Mm -hmm. So that we do not repeat the mistakes mm -hmm. of our past. We mm -hmm. made a mistake after the first mm -hmm. wave. What did we do? We did not really mask and we did not vaccinate. Okay. And what mm -hmm. happened? The virus mm -hmm. thrashed us in the second Absolutely. wave. You know, Absolutely. thrashed us. Now, again, we will have time because this is natural. You know, mm -hmm. universe gives every species a chance to learn, adapt and change mm -hmm. its habit. Mm -hmm. That's it. This is another chance. We mm -hmm. might get another three months or another six months. And mm -hmm. here, guys, I'm really not trying to scare anybody. This yeah. is information straight up. You know, this mm -hmm. wave, I had the opportunity to do ultrasound mm -hmm. scans of, of the lung for okay. pregnant women and for mm -hmm. children as mm -hmm. young as nine months old. Mm -hmm. And even though the young kids did not mm -hmm. have any symptoms or need oxygen, I could see 5 to 15 percent involvement of the lungs you oh. know i have a 10 year old and a six month old now mm. i really don't want the virus to learn like it learned from the from first, the first wave. wave you know right. because clearly in the first wave youngsters were absolutely fine in the second wave i had 50 deaths i think between 18 to 45 it was mm. crazy it was sad to watch and mm. now the third wave timing is really not important. The first wave took the elderly. The second wave took the youngsters. The third wave, the virus will be trying to finish by taking the younger generation off. And I really want all of us to put all effort we can to make sure that that does not happen. Because we have time. We have the next four months. Absolutely. We should make sure that we use these four months, vaccinate, learn about the virus, mm -hmm. make ourselves stronger. You know, these four months are there to make ourselves internally stronger and also gather information about the virus. Because see, most importantly, our children are watching how we are handling the pandemic. The pandemic, absolutely. See, you know, like <laughs> they are really not going to do what we say are they no they're going to do what they're watching us do that is Absolutely. it how we behave they are going to react and mm -hmm. like we are like all of us see just to be completely honest the, we are leaving the world more polluted every single day mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. every single day you mm -hmm. know the world is getting more and more polluted and also we are still careless uh, mm -hmm. Every day when I go for a jog, I see mm -hmm. like dogs playing with masks, which means mm -hmm. we are not disposing of the masks correctly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you are allowing dogs to come into contact with infected okay. masks. Mm -hmm. See, this is all a recipe for like disaster. We have mm -hmm. to become more responsible. We have to understand that wearing a mask is one part of it. Cheers. But you have to know how to dispose it off. Dispose the you know? mask. So you should have a plastic bag every day where all of you in the house dispose your masks off. And mm -hmm. after that, you have to have a biomedical waste bag in which mm -hmm. you put it in and tie it up. You need Hello. to do that. Otherwise, the dogs will be playing with your infected masks in Mask. the dustbins. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. No, we all know that's how the virus good. started. Started. Correct. The wonderful Dr. Uh, Santosh, we'll be taking a small break now and we'll come back and we'll talk more on Women TV India. We'll let's take a small break. Definitely.
yeah we are back and uh, yeah so we will be talking with dr sandosh and uh, yeah are we live now i'm not able to yeah so so yeah so um, yeah we are back and uh, so yes. the break we spoke a lot about what people are doing in terms of mask and everything but uh, i want to ask what is the problem initially was vaccination issue because in social media and other things everywhere there is a rumors that vaccination if you take you will die or you get some other disease many many things were going around and people didn't vaccinate now they are rushing to vaccinate now, why this all this thing happened and why did you know at that time many people come and talk about it yeah of course doctors like you uh rest of them were not were not vocal about it why did yeah. they talk oh let me be very honest with you see we are doctors you know we believe in science but we are also human i was not sure in november i had my doubts you know let's be real here you know see it was great you know the scientists were able to get the vaccine in 6 months you know today i am so thankful because if i was able to touch and treat 1500 patients in the icu you know i have to touch them with with a stethoscope if i was if i was able to it is only because of the vaccines you know i was able to go into the icu confidently okay because of the vaccines that is now in june but in last november i was also skeptical okay it is human nature but if you are skeptical then there is also a price to pay which we are pay you know in india especially we all know that today we don't have infections because we are all vaccinated we know how many of siblings of our parents died young yeah our siblings are alive you know the reason is vaccines we forgot because that's what human beings do we are like that okay but now see four months definitely i see human beings will be skeptical and be aware mm-hmm. and we paid the price now is the time to learn about it and you know like examples like me if not for for the vaccine the amount of exposure which i have had i should have surely gotten covid absolutely you know because i have sometimes spoken to attendants mm-hmm. who have had covid mm-hmm. with their uh, family in the icu but they have not told people oh. i have spoken to like at least 50 of them because the second wave was very very transmissible you know in the last wave one person was in the icu nobody in their family was sick this way if one person was the icu entire family had covid oh, <laughs> all of them had covid and i had to talk to each and every mm-hmm. one of the attendant mm-hmm. you know so now we have learned now there are examples like me mm-hmm. okay so if we if we are still skeptical and we no, still no doctor this delay, is uh, yeah that i want to ask you here i want to uh, i'm sorry to stop you here but still people have lots of doubts and that's why i'm asking you because I oh they should ask this after ask, even later ask one me is, what the doubts are one thing i will explain it if i know yeah preg- women who are pregnant should not take vaccine women who are having periods should not take vaccine women uh all this kind of i'm specifically asking about women because women are more uh, cautious and more afraid because they have to drive the family so uh, these are the kind of questions which are popping up recently in my extended family uh, you know one of my uh, cousin she told oh i am not taking vaccine the, because i have my periods so that kind of things are going around can you clearly yeah, tell no, us i will i will clearly explain like actually um i uh, see see the videos of another doctor called dr pal you know he's he's a gastro yeah, from the us yeah. watch his videos he's fantastic and yeah. in that he had mm-hmm. actually made a video where one of his patients you know mm-hmm. saw this whatsapp where it mm-hmm. said if you have your 
periods don't vaccinate and she postponed it mm, by yes. six weeks and then she got the virus and she did not make it i will like, see i saw the saw the forward and i was so angry i was so angry you know why i was angry it was nothing else but a whatsapp made by one chauvinistic man who because of his small ego or big ego or small mind wanted to tell women that you can't vaccinate on all 30 days like men i don't think there was anything more than that that was it there is absolutely no scientific evidence i have asked gynecologists mm -hmm. antenatal mm -hmm. specialists and women mm -hmm. health specialists also that was mm -hmm. that was just crazy and about lactation mm -hmm. see the general principle of being vaccinated is that you have antibodies mm -hmm. and why do you breastfeed you breastfeed in order to transfer your processed antibodies mm -hmm. through the milk to your baby so that right. your baby is protected from every disease you are protected mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there is absolutely no issues mm -hmm. in breastfeeding also mm -hmm. like so, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. So somebody who is uh, breastfeeding or new mother also can yes they can take the vaccination actually the guidelines are out and they can what about the pregnant woman doctor pregnant woman now who is in the fifth month or sixth month what is that um, can i tell you mm -hmm. a story okay it's ah, okay. it's it's a real life incident mm -hmm. i'm not going to tell you any names but it happened mm -hmm. so like um i was asked asked to see a 34 week old mm -hmm. pregnant woman mm -hmm. okay she already had one daughter okay mm -hmm. and she was covid positive i mm -hmm. saw her on thursday she was absolutely okay that much okay that she said i don't want a lung ultrasound also now doctor i am absolutely mm -hmm. fine she didn't even need oxygen thursday okay, okay. saturday morning i got a call saying that mm -hmm. she needs oxygen we need a lung ultrasound please to mm -hmm. come fast and mm -hmm. i went there she was under slight distress i did the lung ultrasound she had 50% plus involvement okay. and immediately like an angel a gynecologist dr prema came and mm -hmm. she did a cesarean in 2 hours 2 hours within 2 hours and you know that was not enough during the cesarean section the baby was 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 okay but the mom's oxygen levels fell and we had to put her on a ventilator that night all of us didn't sleep luckily she came out the next day today they are fine you know but if we were 6 hours late the story would have been very different entire lives would have been very different oh my god so when it can cause this kind of a risk when the actual virus can put you at such risk mm -hmm. take the vaccination okay because the risk of anything going wrong with the vaccination is way way lesser yes there is a risk there is a risk yes of course see for example when rotary started pulse polio vaccinations mm -hmm. you remember in the 80s there were so many negative things encephalitis brain fever deaths mm -hmm. and all those were true but they mm -hmm. were so minuscule that mm -hmm. today you know i have i i remember classmates mm -hmm. during school who had polio because they mm -hmm. were wearing the shoe right yeah the shoe and i was always interested in movement so i remember them i don't think kids today know what it is absolutely Very they have no idea if no, any no. any child is watching this he'll be like what's what's polio what are calipers what they have no idea and that's because of vaccinations you know india is a country which just that nobody knows to talk about it we are here you know today we don't have family doctors you know india had family doctors because we used to have family fevers we were all a joint family everybody got infected everybody susceptible used to get infected call the family doctor do this do this this thing that thing everybody was 
everybody was treated. But now, thanks to vaccinations, you don't get family fevers because your kids are vaccinated and you're also vaccinated and you have lovely antibiotics. So the concept of family doctor is gone. And you know who replaced the family doctor? WhatsApp forwards. WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah. So, so now... Uh, because WhatsApp forwards have replaced the family doctor, you know, Absolutely. and so you don't have like a trust threshold. No, anybody, mm. even somebody trustworthy, mm. need not know the validity of a WhatsApp forward. And if somebody you trust or you think is intelligent forwards something, even if it is false, you tend to believe it because you think that guy would have done research. This is how mm. WhatsApp forwards screw people up so Absolutely. like i tell all my patients just don't forward anything you're not doing anybody any good uh -huh. mm -hmm. don't forward anything see i'm sure lives were lost not just one but many because of that whatsapp forward i am sure many women would have postponed it you know and it breaks my heart really because that the person who actually designed it is a bloody murderer he is, you know, and unfortunately, all of us who with good hearts forwarded it played a part. He worked or she or he or the person, whoever it was, mm -hmm. worked on our gullibility as good people because we are good but lazy. We don't do the research to identify if it is right. But if it sounds good or if it is forwarded from somebody smart or somebody who we trust, we think it's right. And this forward is a perfect example of why whenever anybody sends you a forward, please don't think it's going to help anybody. It's not going to help anybody. If it is right, your doctor will tell you. Delete the damn WhatsApp forward. <laughs> Sorry, I get really emotional because you know, I, I know, see lives lost. How you know? emotional and you it, are and the way you see that even, I can understand. Even today, it really, really hurts because huh. it was preventable. You know, like it's it 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 hit very close. You know, my uh, okay, the guy who edits all my COVID videos. Mm -hmm. You know, his mom was forty-seven. We lost her to COVID. Oh, you know, it it hit very close. It hit very very close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I really when I see how WhatsApp forwards affect people's lives. I think the only only advice I have is you guys cannot sort it out. You're not that smart. You don't have that medical background. Sometimes I cannot. It's wow, so yeah, difficult. The only thing is delete it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do anybody anything good mm -hmm. because you do not have the medical knowledge to assess if it's true or not. You're forwarding it because you think he will figure it out or she will figure it out. No, if they if they trust you, they will think it's true. So if you're not sure, don't forward it. Please stop it. High time we stop it. That's true. That's Take the true. Con conscious decision now. That's true. That's true. So so women so who are watching the show now and who watch the show after I broadcast this, please. Doctor has clearly told even if you're having periods or even if you're a, a mother, please go and take vaccination. Don't get, you know, uh, unnecessary doubts. And Doctor, one final question before I end the show. We're almost yes. 30 minutes after we finish. So one final question. Is the black fungus going to affect and is it going to be another kind of virus which is going to, you know, carry? And what is the thing about black fungus now? Okay. Um, I think this is really pertinent and extremely important. So I'm going to clarify it. Black mm -hmm. fungus or mucorales, okay, that is the name. Okay, the disease it causes is mucormycosis. Black okay. fungus is there in air everywhere in India because it mm -hmm. grows out of rotten food, fruit, mm -hmm. and animal dung. Okay. Where do you find this? Everywhere in India. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. but and as as it is so abundant and as mm -hmm. we are exposed to it from when we are babies our immune system normally can thrash the fungus out we mm -hmm. can go and take something important out of the dustbin and still nothing will happen to us because our mm -hmm. immunity before covid could handle that easily yeah. and also mm -hmm. 
before covid sugar levels don't like zoom up or increase high mucormycosis or black fungus affects only two kinds people people who have uncontrolled diabetes and people who have immune dysregulation which means that their immune cells are not able to recognize and even if they're able to recognize they are in, they are unable to mount a response so okay. post covid especially after icu you're treated with steroids antibiotics intensive care all the medications and your sugars are out your oh. oxygen levels are low you're tired at this point of time when you're exposed to a fungus which otherwise your immune system would just thrash yes. your immune system is too tired see it's like see even if it's a score of 60 in a t20 mm -hmm. match you know for mm -hmm. csk if only the last two players are there it will be difficult no unless one of them is mm -hmm. msk you know yeah, you have to yeah. unless it's msd it will be difficult you know so Very it's difficult. the same thing so it's like mucormycosis is asking csk to score 60 runs when only two mm -hmm. players are left and mm -hmm. it will be difficult that's why we need to be careful it can be prevented even after covid double mask mm -hmm. okay double mask keep all your dustbins closed Close. Okay. okay. Make sure. Remember that mucormycosis starts with symptoms of a simple sinus. Okay. So if you have any such symptoms, call your doctor right away. Keep your HbA1c under six. If anything from this, mm -hmm. all I'm a diabetic. Okay, I'm a diabetic. So all you diabetics, make sure that your sugar levels are under control. These are very low. that is the main thing you know because this time in icu when i saw somebody who was a little obese and somebody told me hbo1c is above 10 i used to think oh my god this guy is at risk mm, that's true so okay, yeah sure sure doctor then we got lot of lot of lot of information many people are also watching the show and saying it's a wonderful show thank you so much doctor it was a wonderful oh you're welcome you're welcome and if any of you have any any doubts about about the vaccine you know please i'm here to answer like why you know if any of you have your wise ask me uh, like even you can connect with me online on fb yeah, anything yeah. okay I have, i have all the doctors thing all the holidays pages instagram everything app linked in this this show you can please go and tag them you can go and personally go to his shows and watch them and if you still have doubts on vaccines please ask him and please get vaccinated thank you so much santosh you're welcome you're welcome thank you, thank you so much for this thank opportunity you. thank you women tv thank india you, thank you thank you and doctor thank you so much